Good evening. Tonight's uh, Committee of Addressment hearing is being held via video conference, live streaming video on the town's live stream page at oakville.ca. This is a hearing to consider applications for minor variance and consents held under the authority of the Planning Act. Please keep in mind the intent of the process is to review the application that is before the committee, listen to the evidence, and then make a decision. This process is not intended to be used to resolve any concerns or disputes that may exist between the town, individuals, and organizations. If a request for deferral is made and the committee grants such a request, the applicant and authorized agent must contact the secretary treasurer to schedule a new hearing date. In order to conduct an effective and efficient electronic hearing, we have adopted the following process. If you are watching the live stream of this hearing on oakville.ca and you do wish to speak to an item on the agenda, you can call 905-815-6095. Again, the number is 905-815-6095. The phone number will be also posted at the, on the screen below the live stream page at oakville.ca. Staff will be standing by to take your call, and when you do call in, you'll be asked for your name, number of the item that you wish to address, your address, and your telephone number. And further instructions will be provided to you to call back to join the video conference. When the chair of the committee polls for interested parties, the secretary treasurer will unmute you when it is your time to speak. The applicant or agent will then be given the opportunity to briefly explain to the committee the basis of their application, answer questions that may arise. A maximum of five minutes will be provided for the presentation. Any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. All delegations must also state their name and address for the record and a maximum of five minutes will be provided to make the presentation. All remarks and questions will be directed to the chair and any submissions beyond the five minutes will be at the discretion of the committee. The applicant or agent will then be provided with a further five minutes to respond to the comments made by interested parties and answer any questions from the committee members. If the applicant or agent has any concerns found in staff report, particularly with any proposed conditions, this will be your opportunity to advise us. The matter will then be taken into committee for the decision and this will mark the end of all discussion. Any person desiring a notice of decision for an application must provide a written request, preferably through email to the secretary treasurer. Please note that you must make a written request in order to inc be included on the list that is used by the Ontario Land Tribunal for the giving of any subsequent notice of appeal. Written notice and of the committee's decision will be mailed no later than 10 days for minor variance and 15 days for consents to, to the applicant, agent, and any other person who has filed a written request. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, you may appeal this to the Ontario Land Tribunal and the last day to do so will be noted on the decision. If no appeal is received within the prescribed time frame, the decision of the committee becomes final and binding and the secretary treasurer will then notify the applicant and anyone who received a copy of the decision through written correspondence. People participating in this hearing are to be courteous to and respectful of the members of the committee, town staff, and any other people participating in the electronic hearing. Tonight's electronic hearing is being video recorded and available for future viewing at oakville.ca. Thank you. Um, we have no regrets this evening. Do I have any declarations of peculiar interests? I see none. Okay, uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer, I'll be taking deferrals at this time. Anyone who is in attendance of the hearing and you do wish to request a, a deferral or withdrawal of your application, please raise your hand and the Secretary Treasurer will unmute you to speak. Uh, hello, Madam Chair. Sorry. Good I'm... evening. Uh, my name is Stephen Cross from Planner of Glen Schneider Associates. I'm here on behalf of the applicant for um, item 6.1, which is item 80 slash 151 uh, 2022, which is for 27, sorry, 2370 Lakeshore Road. Um, I'd like to request a deferral. We received some concerns from staff, so we'd like to take the opportunity to have the discussion with staff before coming back to committee. You said CEV 151 of 2022? 
Right, yes. Okay. Um, any questions uh, of Mr. Kloss at this time? Okay, uh, all those in support of a deferral? Okay, your application has been deferred, thank you. Anyone else? Madam Secretary Treasurer, is there anyone else? Yes, um, there is um, uh, Mr. Matthew Ribo. Uh, um, he's going to request the fraud. Hello, my name is Matthew Ribo, agent uh, representing the case uh, filed under A 153 2022 for 1235 Ingledean uh, Road. Um, and you said 153, correct? No, 1235. 1235. 12, 1235. Ingledean Drive, sorry. And it's file number A 153 2022. Again, my name is Matthew Rivo, representing uh, Gaspar Design Group as uh, the owner's agent. And uh, we've since received a lot of uh, opposition from neighbors, and we're requesting a deferral so that we can uh, revisit the design and uh, hopefully. Um, um, hopefully come to uh, basically a revision that might satisfy either fewer conditions and gain staff support, or at least uh, some less opposition from neighbors. Very well, thank you. Um, members, I'm in your hands, all those in support of a deferral. Okay, your application has been deferred, none of those, thank you. Anyone else waiting, Ms. Secretary? Yes, uh, Ms. Ruth Victor, she's going to request the fraud too. Good evening. My Hi. name is Ruth Victor. I'm fine with regard, I'm requesting a deferral tonight with regards to file CAVA 1522022, address 2061 Lakeshore Road East. It's number two on the agenda. Um, the notice needs to be amended to include an additional variance uh, required. Staff are supportive of the application and moving forward. We don't anticipate any issues with this. However, the notice and the decision um, will need to be corrected. And so we're working with staff to have that addressed at this time. Very well. Thank you. Um, all those in support of a deferral. Okay. The application has been deferred, none opposed. Thank you, Ms. Victor. Thank you. Is there anyone else waiting for or to request a deferral, Madam Secretary Treasurer? Um. Sorry, I'm having a, a printing issue, so I apologize for the noise. Um, is there anyone else waiting? Um, I have a pers uh, the person, um, Iona Hein, Hein um, and I'm not sure which application is in um, request. Okay. We need to ask her to uh, unmute herself. Okay. Um, can you pronounce her name again? Um, I believe I on a... Which item is it? Um, 
Oh, you don't know the item? Okay, no, I don't know the, the item. Yeah. I'm just waiting for her to unmute herself. Uh, is she visible? Uh, she's on the... As a panelist. Iona Hine? Can you? Iona Hine? Hine? Yes. Yes. Okay. Ms. Hine, uh, go ahead. You can turn your camera on if you can and let us know what item you're here to speak on. Ms. Hine, the camera's on now. I, there's just something um, blocking it. Ah, very well. There we go. Hello, good evening. And now you have to unmute yourself. <laughs> it'll be next to the, it'll be on next to the, where you t tap the camera. There's another button that says uh, microphone. If you just press there. Um, anyone with a computer can help. I have an iPad, so mine is on the top right corner. It says stop video and mute. Wherever you press camera, it'll, if you're on a computer, I believe it's in the bottom. But it's not working. Okay, I can see you mouthing. It's not working. So is your microphone not working? Okay, would you prefer to call in then? Uh, the phone number is uh, 905. 815-6095. You're going to have to, yeah, um, I don't think there'll be interference, but if there is interference, I'll have you uh, close your uh, screen because sometimes the phone and the screen feed uh, interfere. Staff will be standing by to take your call. Um, while we're waiting, Madam Secretary Treasurer. Um, yes. I have, I have, I have 1235 one, Ingledean Drive as CAV 153, but Mr. Rebo insisted it was CAV 135. 153, correct. It one, is 153. Yeah, okay. yeah, 153. Okay. But he was saying 1235 or the address? No, but I asked about the CEV and he said no, one, CV 135 and 1235 Ingledean. Correct. Okay. All right. So now I have one uh, CEV 151 and 152 and 153 Three. that have been deferred, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Has the couple called in? Has Ms. Hine been and able I to get through? And I believe they are in regards to the application, the first one that was deferred, because I could oh. find their name. Uh, it's on, uh, and they live at 96 Nelson Street. So, yeah, that's correct. Oh, so, oh, okay. So, Ms. Hine, let me uh, um, comfort you. I appreciate you coming on and participating. There's nothing to worry about. The application has been deferred. Um, all the letters of objections that uh, we have um, have been noted. They are on record. Um, I actually didn't get a chance to read the names of the people who have um, uh, submitted letters of objection, um, but I, I, I can uh, and, I, and I will. But the point is that now that the applicant needs to come back to us, there will be another set of 
uh, review to this application and there will be notes and um, you will have to see the new application that they come back with and any amendments that they make. So I'm hoping that they will um, involve the neighbors now that they've seen how many have written in with objections. Um, and uh, at that time, you will still have another opportunity to come back. And if you're not satisfied with the amendments or the changes that you've seen, you'll still have an opportunity to come by, back and voice your opinion and speak to the committee. Okay, thank you for explaining that. Um, so I'm assuming we'll receive some notification via... Absolutely. The yes, the All same right. way you received it this time. So, sorry, sorry to intervene there. So this process starts from the beginning again. They have to apply for planning permission if they want to go further, uh, more stories on this building? Um, I'm not sure exactly what they will have to do, but at this point in time, they have issues that need to be addressed before they can come back because our staff is not in agreement with the variances that they're requesting. So sometimes in, in making changes to these variances so that they can comply or come back with a, a new set of variances, they will have to be making changes to their drawings. And in any event, regardless of whether changes are made or not, you will be getting a full set of documentation in terms of notification and you'll be able to see um, what they have or what they have not uh, requested. And then you'll be able to come before the committee and voice your opinion at that time. Okay, thank you. Okay, yes, we, we just needed some clarification because obviously joining the meeting and everything's moving so swiftly, we weren't quite sure. Whether yes, we yes, and, and, and I apologize. Um, I, I, I should have read the names of all the people that have, have objected and, and perhaps I will take a minute to, to do that. Uh, then your names are on record and um, we know that you have had interest in the application and you will continue to have interest in the application and you will be notified once again in the same process and, and in the same way that you were notified the first time around. The only, are you able, sorry, are you go able ahead. to see the number of, of um, people that have attended the meeting okay. tonight? N no. Um, they, we only see if people have requested to speak like yourself okay. and you've put your hand up or they've called in. Um, but I, I have s several letters of objections, actually, and, and once I've hung up with you, I will um, read them in, into record because it is, it's, is quite uh, a few. Right. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Bye. You're is there um, anyone else who's waiting for a deferral, Madam Secretary? Or has, or has asked, asked to speak to an application? Um, I don't see any hands. Uh, okay, okay. so, so uh, just, just for the record, since today's applications that were uh, deferred, and I know we, we moved through the deferrals pretty quickly, um, uh, just, just for the benefit of the public, if there is anyone who is in attendance or is watching the, the committee and they are interested uh, in application CAV 151 of 2022 uh, in, on 2370 Lakeshore Road West, which is CAV 151 of 2022 at 2370 Lakeshore Road West, um, we have a letter of support from uh, Chris Wasik. And then we have letters of objection from uh, Shelley Harshow at 96 Nelson Street, Unit 21, and uh, Ms. Iona Hine at 96 Nelson Street, Unit 2, and uh, Mr. Al Sahib, uh, 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 Sylvie Dansero in 96 Nelson Street, Unit 25, and uh, Ms. Joyce Wayne at 96 Nelson Street, Unit 18, uh, Shanwaz Nabi uh, at 96 Nelson Street and uh, Sharn Bashra, we have no address, but we have Arroya Permostofi at 
395 Nelson Street, uh, a Q and P fam at 96 Nelson Street, Unit 17, a Mike Clinic at 2375 Belea Street, uh, the Gal family at 160 Nelson Street, Marjorie L. McKenzie at 80 Sahara Lane, uh, Townhouse 1. Uh, I have Miss Iona Hine listed twice, so I'm assuming that's a mistake. Then I and Shelly Harsho again, and Michael. Okay, so uh, Michael uh, Matchwick at 96 Nelson Street, and Mr. Mai Tran at 96 Nelson Street, Unit 9, I believe, and then a Catherine Scott at 2059. Worthington Drive. If any one of these members of the uh, the neighbors or public have uh, heard their voices and are in attendance, uh, please know that the application that is before us today has been deferred and you will be notified when the application comes and if it does come before the uh, committee once again. Okay, um, I think I will do the same thing for uh, application um, CAV 153 of 2022 at 1235 Ingledean Drive, because there's also a few people who've written, written letters of objections. Again, this is application CAV 153 of 2022. It has been deferred at the request of the applicant and will be coming back or may be coming back in front of the committee uh, and you will be notified at that time. And we have received letters of objection from a Ms. Erwin Biner at uh, 1242 Hollywood Crescent, Ron Moore at 1239 Hollywood Field Crescent, uh, Jillian Salter at 1267 Ingledean Drive, Anne and Gordon King at 1262 Ingledean Drive, James and Anne Elizabeth. Alexander at 1263 Ingledean Drive, a a Helen Thomas at 1239 Ingledean Drive, uh, John Thompson at 1279 Ingledean Drive, Charmaine Wunsch at 1246 Hollywood, Hollyfield Crescent, and Mr. Ahmed Nabil at 1231 Ingledean Drive. Uh, Stevens Peter Lewis at 1238 Ingledean Drive and a Johan Hirsch at 1245 Ingledean Drive. If there's anyone in attendance this evening for this application or has shown interest in this application, please know that it has been deferred. Thank you. Um, we will proceed now to um, the next item on our agenda, which is item. CAV 154 of 2022 at 411 Seaton Drive. Again, it's CAV 154 of 2022 at 411 Seaton Drive. I believe I have Mr. Kieran as the agent. Do we have Mr. Kieran with us or is there someone else? No, I'm here. Hi. Hi, Mr. Hello. Kieran, go ahead. Go ahead, David. we see you now, go ahead. Yeah, you can hear me and see me, that's good. Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the committee. My name is Joris Kieran, I'm the agent for the applicant and uh, I'll be presenting um, the file tonight uh, the address uh, of my office is uh, 11 Bronte Road, Unit 31. Uh, this is a, um, uh, a two-story dwelling that's being proposed uh, as an infill, um, seeking um, five variances, so uh, a few more than uh, we typically have on a, on a straightforward house like this, but it's uh, mainly because the uh, lot is quite irregular. And... Uh, several of the variances result uh, just from that alone. So I'll just quickly run through uh, that, uh, all the variances, and then I can, I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. 
So um, I'll jump around a little bit here because uh, on the slides, it's uh, just a little bit uh, out of sequence, but so variance number one has to do with the, uh, the new uh, bylaw pertaining to the window well size restriction, which um, is mainly there because, you know, side yards are typically jeopardized because of larger window wells and they were having issues with drainage and also fire safety, et cetera. So uh, this is a rear facing window well. So it, it, there, there's not really any concerns in that regard and, and it's a little bit bigger um, for that reason. So that's variance one. Um, variance number uh, three, uh, which is incorrectly labeled as five there, is uh, the rear and setback variance. So there's a reduction there. Uh, and as you can see, it's mainly because the rear rear lot line is, is, is at a bit of an angle. So uh, we have tapered the building back to, um, you know, be sympathetic to that angle, but we have the corners kind of projecting beyond the line. So that's why the, the variance is there. Then jumping to variance five, front yard setback, similar situation, it's not as pronounced, it's just because the front lot line is curved, so therefore the setback is curved and that pushes a few corners of the building uh, outside of the, uh, the, the allowed setback. Slide two now, please. So now this is uh, variance um, number two. Uh, which is the variance uh, not related to the lot uh, irregularity, but just uh, the client seeking a little bit of extra uh, storage space in the garage. So we're looking at a about 11 square meter increase in garage floor area. And lastly, uh, variance four is for the residential floor area increase. So we're going a little bit higher, 41% allowed. We're asking for two, two small increase. Uh, mainly attributable to this uh, this study that's um, off to the side, and that's uh, that's all five variances. Uh, happy to answer any questions. If there are any? Are there any questions of Mr. Kieran at this time? Okay, I see none. Has anyone uh, joined the? Uh, meeting and requested to speak to this item, Madam Secretary Treasurer. I don't see anybody that uh, wants to speak in regards to this application. Okay, okay. Very, very well, well there are no questions, questions of Mr. Kieran. And, and do we, we have, have a motion? motion. On the, we'll take, take the matter into committee. committee. Go, Go ahead, ahead Ms. Murray. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, having conducted my site visit, uh, reviewed the applicant's written submission as, as, as well as the town's written staff report, which I note that the staff is in support of this, these uh, minor variances, having also taken a, into account uh, the presentation this evening by the applicant, which is always uh, um, excellent. Thank you. Um, I note that there uh, do not appear to be any objections uh, at committee this evening that are weighing in, and I don't believe there are any objections at this time uh, from a written perspective. Um, I am satisfied that the minor variances uh, meet all four tests under the Planning Act, and I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the variances requested, subject to the following conditions, that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated August 3rd, 2022, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Murray. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support. Okay. The application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you. Good evening. Okay. Um, application CAV 155 of 2022 at 450 Brook Mill Road. Again, this is application CAV 155 of 2022 at 450 Brook Mill Road. Good evening, members of the committee. Uh, my name is- Good evening. 
I'm the planning consultant on behalf of the applicant uh, for 450 Brook Mill Road. So I have prepared a, uh, a brief presentation for the benefit of the committee this evening. Um, next slide, please. Um, so the subject property um, at 450 Brook Mill Road um, is currently occupied by a single detached dwelling, uh, which is to be demolished. And the homeowner seeks to improve the site with construction of a new single detached dwelling. Obviously the adjacent uses surrounding the subject site are residential detached dwellings. Uh, which includes a number of um, either reconstructed or renovated dwellings um, with a variety of architectural styles in the neighborhood. The property is situated on the west side of Brook Mill Road and the subject site is approximately 557 square meters in lot area. Uh, next slide, please. So the application before the committee this evening uh, seeks to pursue approval of a minor variance that would facilitate um, the, uh, the construction of a new single detached dwelling and one variance is requested being a, uh, an increase um, to the floor area ratio within the RL3-0 uh, zone of uh, the Oakville Zoning Bylaw 2014-014. Uh, next slide, please. I will note for the committee, so the proposed dwelling um, includes one private garage uh, with a coverage of 33.93%. Um, the dwelling um, proposes a building area of 259 uh, square meters, and the dwelling is located towards the middle of the site, which do allow for ample setbacks from adjacent properties. Um, the proposed built form includes a number of inundations um, in the second floor and roof lines of the building. This includes um, uh, second floor side yard setbacks that are in excess of the existing dwelling setbacks um, on the property, uh, which is currently which is currently cited um, on the site. And you can kind of see some of the outline, um, the red obviously on the site plan is the general footprint of the existing dwelling. And you can see some of the inundations of the second floor um, as the building um, expands beyond the first floor. Um, next slide, please. This is uh, obviously just the front elevation. Um, it's hard to really see um, some of those um, inundations that I'm referring to um, just from, from, this, um, from this elevation. However, we'll note that again, those second floor elements are in some instances significantly pushed back uh, from uh, obviously both the front as well as some of these side, uh, side property lines. In terms of um, uh, the intent of uh, the official plan, zoning bylaw, and generally the four tests of um, uh, the Planning Act. I will note that the dwelling has been evaluated in the context of the urban design guidelines for the town of Oakville. Um, the architecture and proportions of the building have been considered to reflect um, the scale and ensure compatibility of the existing streetscape. Um, the proposed dwelling incorporates a front porch glazing which interacts with the street, a two vehicle garage, and various um, building elevation components to provide variety, uh, which are commonly used architectural elements found in this neighborhood. And it's my opinion that the, the proposed dwelling obviously fits in with the context of the streetscape. Um, obviously the floor area ratio regulation is intended to assist in regulating the scale and massing of a building. And um, the proposed increase in floor area ratio is not considered to contribute negatively to the scale and massing for this dwelling. And I will note that the proposed dwelling um, is obviously in keeping with the required lot coverage height, as well as all building setbacks um, and dwelling depth requirements of the bylaw. Um, next slide, please. Just in summary, um, we've obviously read the, um, the planning staff report, uh, which does recommend um, uh, support uh, for the application. And it's my opinion that the proposal does meet the forecast uh, under the Planning Act and represents good planning. Um, I'm here before the committee and be happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Demchuk. Are there any questions of Mr. Demchuk at this time? Okay, I see none. Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Um, I would like to uh, <clears throat> thank the applicant's agent for the uh, presentation this evening. Um, I'd also like to note that the uh, town staff report is in support of uh, the uh, application as applied for. Also noting that um, there were no negative comments presented in tonight's presentation by any members of the public, as well as there were no um, written submissions objecting uh, this application. Um, I think that uh, what has been presented uh, with regards to the uh, massing of the building and that it meets the other, uh, um, like there's no other variances other than the, uh, the, the uh, floor area ratio. Uh, I would like to move a motion in favor of the application, finding that it does meet the uh, four tests of the Planning Act and the, the town bylaws. Uh, I'd like to move it with the following two conditions. Um, <clears throat> one, sorry, excuse me, that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated June 20th, 2022. And two, our standard uh, condition that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction. Thank you very much, Mr. Flemington. Is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. All those in support? Okay, um, your application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you very much. Um, application CAV 156 of 2022 at 1415 Rebecca Street. And again, it's CAV 156 of 2022 at 1415 Rebecca Street. And there is a letter of objection from a Mr. Stephen Fava at 366 Kerr Street. Go ahead, Mr. Ben Jonathan. I'm, I'm not <laughs> even going to try. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, Madam Chair. Um, yes, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, uh, the uh, proposal before you today, if we could go to page two of my presentation, please. The proposal before you today uh, is to ha have a small side addition and some interior alterations to a dwelling that uh, very importantly already has a building permit that is issued on it. Um, if we could go to the, uh, the presentation I submitted, please. The, the alterations that are proposed do not um, alter the front massing of the dwelling. The dwelling itself has a building permit that is issued that has the exact height, front yard setback, as well as side yard setbacks uh, as what is proposed before you today. Um, I have reviewed the staff report, and uh, I, I would very respectfully disagree with some of the statements that are in it, uh, mainly that the massing and scale of the proposed addition uh, in the dwelling would make it visually appear larger than the existing dwellings in the immediate area. Again, the front elevation of the dwelling is to remain unchanged from what has an issued building permit for a two-story dwelling. Is, is there any way we can get up the documents I, I submitted? Would you would yeah, you wait yeah, for staff. a second? I'm trying to uh, see what is going on for the drawings. Okay. okay. Yeah, there is a 156 Rebecca Street.
Uh, sorry, Mr. Benzovsky. Uh, when did you submit the presentation? I can't find except the all drawings that you submit with uh, um, with the application. It was sent in yesterday morning uh, before the timeline. Uh, Oh, that this was uh, addressed to um, uh, to the planner, not to me, correct? Uh, it, it was, was sent, sent to, to just to bear with me for one sec. It was sent. Uh, It was sent to um, a C of A requests at yes. Oakville.ca. Yes, but it says from address to uh, afternoon Sherda, the, the to to planner, not to us. Anyway, um, which one? There is the two drawings. Which one you want to be seen tonight? Uh, I'd like to look at the front elevation. I sent the existing building permit front elevation as well as some graphics that okay, indicated there is a building what was being permit, changed. And it's not says the presentation, it says final building permit approval. And then there is a Rebecca Street graphics. Which one do you Correct. want? That's, it's both. It's both. You want a boat. Thank you. That's it, thank you. So what's on the screen before you now is the front elevation of the building permit that has been issued for the property. So what we see there is a height and massing as well as scale that has been contemplated in the zoning bylaw for what would fit in within the character of the neighborhood. In terms of the official plan policy uh, 1119A, B, as well as H, uh, in terms of it being contemplating in the zoning bylaw, for what would be an appropriate massing, scale, and height. We therefore can't go to the official plan to say something doesn't fit in with something that is permitted within the zoning bylaw itself. So this front elevation that is on the screen is part of this building permit that is issued to allow for this two-story dwelling. Can we go to the next page, please? So that again is the site plan for what is issued. If we could keep going, please. Oh, into the, sorry, could we go into the applicant presentation portion, the other one then, please? My apologies here also. Yes, thank you. So what we see here, the only alteration to the ground floor is the, the blue portion behind the garage that is to be filled in. The front portion where we see revision one, two, and three are simply architectural elements that add columns to the front elevation of the dwelling. Again, there is no change to the front yard setback or the height of the dwelling that is proposed before you today. The only alteration to the first floor is the area behind the garage that would be built in line with that existing sidewall. Could we go to the next side, slide, please? Here again on the second floor, we see those same revisions one, two, and three in the yellow, red, and green that are those architectural elements at the front. What we see here is two filling in of existing open to below areas that constitute that increase in FSI, as well as the modest increase in coverage. I think, again, it's important to note that what is being proposed here today is contemplated in the zoning bylaw from a front yard setback, a side yard setback, as well as a height. The massing we see from the street will remain unchanged from this application that is proposed for you today. The only addition that adds any floor area to any side wall of the dwelling is that area we reviewed on the first floor that is behind the existing permitted garage. And again, that is built in line with the side wall of the dwelling. So to go back to the comments uh, of the planning department, 
Um, what I would say is, again, what has been contemplated within the zoning bylaw in terms of height, setbacks, and building depth is all permitted uh, as per that zoning, sorry, as per the building permit that has been issued. I would say that the massing and scale will remain unchanged, save for that small side addition that is proposed behind the garage on that first and second floor. All of the other additions are interior alterations and will not alter any built form or have any adverse impact on any adjacent neighbor. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Um, are there any questions at this time? Or items of clarification? I'll give you a minute. Are there any questions? Okay, I see none. Um, let's take the matter into committee. If there's no one uh, who, uh, is there anyone who has asked to speak to this application, Madam Secretary of the Treasurer? No, Madam Chair. That no one has called in? No, but nobody has called. Okay, very well. We, we did note uh, Mr. Stephen Faba's uh, letter of objection, so that's already been recorded. Should we take the matter into committee? Did we lose Mr. Talowski? Oh, there we go. Okay, we're all here now. Who would like to put a forth a motion? Mr. Tlowski, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hopefully I'll stay connected long enough to get this out. Um, Madam Chair, I, I gotta agree with staff um, and not the applicant on this file. Uh, it's, it's always a dilemma in that you can comply with the bylaw and be out of scale character with the existing community. And you have the right to do that and get a building permit, which this applicant did. But now they're coming back and asking to exceed the bylaw requirements. And in my mind, when you've got a house, which I believe is out of character, but as of right, that's fine. But when you come and ask for more, I believe it's the applicants obligated to try to mitigate the impact of the dwelling. And the applicant has done none of that here. They're just taking what they can build as a right and asking to be allowed to build even more without any respect for trying to make the house uh, comply and mitigate any impact. Um, I believe this house does will have an impact. I don't believe that it is desirable or meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. So I would move that the application be denied. Okay, Mr. Tulowski, uh, that is the recommendation that is before us. Is there a discussion on that recommendation? Go ahead, Mr. Harcastle. I'll just take a quick moment. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll just take a quick moment to um, echo the comments of Mr. Tlowski. Um, This is a, 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 a building that is insensitively designed with respect to uh, massing. And regardless of the compliance issue, um, uh, this does not comply with the character of the area. So uh, I will support the motion uh, on, the, uh, on the floor. Thank you, Mr. Harcastle. Any further discussion? Okay, I see none. Um, all those in support of denying the application? 
Okay, the application has been denied, none opposed. I'm sorry, you're gonna have to come back um, at another time with a better proposal. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Um, application CAV 157 of 2022 at 71 Birch Hill Lane. Again, this is CAV 157 at 71 Birch Hill Lane. I have a Mr. Venturuzo, I believe. Am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, Venturuzo. Go ahead, sir. Um, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the committee. My name is Daniel Ventrizzo of Veris Design Inc. I'm the applicant and the designer for 71 Birch Hill Lane. Um, we've read the staff report and respectfully disagree with their conclusion. Is our opinion that this development is appropriate for the site and that the proposed two-story dwelling fits within the context of the neighborhood and that the four tests of the Planning Act have been met? As mentioned in the report, this neighborhood is characterized by a mix of one-story and two-story dwelling units with varying architectural styles, materials, massings, and scale. We've developed our proposal to reflect these conditions to ensure that they, we are compatible with the surrounding neighborhood, as well as within the context of Birch Hill Lane. We believe that our variances are minor in nature, and they do, don't represent a cumulative impact on the site. Uh, slide number one, variance one. Uh, we are requesting a variance to permit 62.2 square meters of private garage floor area, whereas the bylaw permits 56 square meters. The variance sought is for an extra 6.2 square meters in private garage floor area. This area is to allow for the proposed below grade entrance located within the rear of the garage, which has been highlighted in orange on slide one. Staff have indicated that the intent of regulating the garage floor area is to prevent the garage from being visually dominant feature of the dwelling. A proposed width and massing of the garage is not affected by this extra floor area and will remain a two-car garage visually from the front facade with or without this additional area. As indicated on slide one and two by the dashed red line, removing this additional 6.2 square meters will not affect the appearance of the front facade as the garage at the rear of the house is only a one-story component. Removing this area and relocating the rear exterior side wall of the garage will not impact the second floor wall location thus not changing the overall massing. Worth noting variances for the increased private garage area have been previously approved for this neighborhood and in specific on the street. 10 Birchill Lane was approved at 67 square meters and 12 Birchill Lane was approved at 80.38 square meters, as well as several approvals on Lakeshore Road. It is for this, these reasons that we feel the request for the additional 6.2 square meters is minor in nature and does not impact the overall design of the dwelling. Uh, if you could please put it to slide three. Variance two, the request for variance is to prevent an increased residential floor area ratio of 29.15%, whereas the bylaw permits 29%. The variance requested will only be increasing the residential floor area ratio by 2.12 square meters. The additional proposed floor area is equal to 10 inches being removed from the overall primary bedroom length as indicated in the in orange on slide three. If we were to relocate the rear wall of the primary bedroom by the 10 inches as indicated by the dash red line, we'd have a negative effect on the massing and scale of the dwelling, thus having no significant impact on the overall streetscape. You could please put slide four up. Variance three, front yard setback. The requested variance is to permit a minimum front yard setback of 12.19 meters, whereas the bylaw requires 12.70 meters. The variance request is to allow for an encroachment of 0 0.15 meters for the front porch as highlighted in orange on slide four. The staff report appears to imply that the entire dwelling is located 0.1 meters from the property line, which is not the case. In fact, if you look at slide four, you will notice the majority of the dwelling is set back at 12.95 meters on the garage side and 14.24 meters on the opposite side from the front property line. These are greater than what is required by the bylaw. What is also worth noting is the majority of the front wall is relatively in line with the both neighbors main walls on either side. In fact, the neighbor located at 79 Birchill Lane has a setback of 11.29 meters 
to the covered front porch. We do believe that setbacks proposed for the dwelling are in keeping with the neighborhood and with our immediate neighbors and therefore minor in nature. Slide five, please. We are requesting a variance to permit a maximum building height of 10.19 meters, whereas the bylaw requires nine meters. We have put great thought into the request for the additional 1.9 meters and understand this is a significant request. A proposed two-story dwelling has various architectural features, for instance, box, bay, box bays, projected front porch, varying roof lines and dormers, which all assist in reducing the massing and scale of the dwelling on the property. We were carefully careful to choose where to implement the variation in massing to account for the transition between the two adjacent properties, one of it, which is a story and a half and the other a bungalow. The location of these features also helped to break down the roof line, reducing the impact of the height being requested. The primary objective was to allow for the change in volumes within the design while accounting for the visual appearance of the roof line. Many new developments will cut down the main roof line to meet the height requirements without considering the visual impact from the streetscape thus creating a visually awkward looking house. We've taken the opposite approach, even though we are flattening the main roof, we want, to still, if we want it still to be represented in the scale of the rest of the house while not being too dominant. Slide five illustrates height limits on the front elevation. The red dashed line indicates the bylaw requirement of nine meters, the blue line indicates 10 meters, and the green line indicates 10.3, which is the maximum variance approved in this neighborhood. Should the committee find that our request of 10.9 meters will not be favorable, we feel that we could reduce the roof line to 10.3 and still keep the visual appeal of the dwelling from the streetscape and would have no objection in this reduction to be more in keeping with what has been previously approved in the neighborhood. In conclusion, we feel that the proposed application before the committee is minor in nature and meets the four tests of the Planning Act. Contrary to the staff report, we believe that the totality of the variances do not have a negative impact on the surrounding area and that our proposal will fit within the context of this transitional neighborhood, which has a mixture of built form. We request that the application be approved and look forward to answering any further questions the committee may have. Thank you. Um, are there any questions of Mr. Ventruzo? Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Thank you, Madam Chair. Through you to the applicant, I'd like to ask what the heel, uh, ceiling height is on the first and second floor. Thank you. Through you, Chair, uh, the ceiling height on the first floor is going to be 10 feet and the ceiling height on the second floor will be nine feet. Go ahead. Follow-up question through you, Madam Chair. Um, uh, conceivably, if you reduce the height of the first floor ceiling, as well as the second floor, you could be compliant with the, with the, um, and wouldn't need the, the variance uh, for height. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Chair, yes, that would, that would, uh, uh, we would comply with the height requirement. However, the, some of the features within the house and the ceiling features that the uh, owner would like to have require us to have these higher volume ceilings. Uh, Follow-up question, Ma uh, Madam Chair. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I have to agree with staff's comments under variance number one. Um, I feel that the garage is visually dominant and it looks to be about a quarter of the visual from the front of the street. Is, did I read those measurements correctly? Uh, the garage is at 23 feet, seven meters. The entire house is 84 uh, feet, almost 85 feet, 25.9 meters. The uh, variance provision allows, if you would, if you take the total square meters allowed under the bylaw for a three car garage. Um, if you were to take away the, walkout basement stair that we've added in the back of the garage and move that additional space beside the current two-car garage design, we would be allowed to have three-car garages be even more dominant than what we are proposing. Any further questions? Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. With respect to the first three variances, um, I think you've satisfied me um, that those are indeed minor. Um, but it's 
variance number four that I'm struggling with, um, particularly given the um, there's a lot of existing uh, bungalows, uh, lower um, height houses in the neighborhood. But um, is it possible to get that uh, drawing with the various lines back on the board? I just want to understand from the different colors. So the red line is what you're permitted as of right. right. And which line were you suggesting that um, you could accept? The green line um, would be what uh, the maximum variance in this area has been approved for in the past. So we were thinking that we could probably reduce our, our uh, design to accommodate that. Are you able to help us with the context of that previous approval in terms yeah. of this, you know, whether the, it was a building significantly set back from the street, what was on either side of it? It was for uh, 392 Lakeshore. Which is across the street on the main intersection of Birch Hill and Lakeshore Boulevard or Lakeshore Road West. Uh, sorry, I'm just pulling up the variances. Uh, the variances for that were for the garage area and for um, for the building heights. Uh, just looking at I would say that the location of the dwelling on three nine two Lakeshore is probably a little bit further back than we are, but I wouldn't say significantly a lot. Thank you. Any other questions? Ms. Arun, did you have something to add? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, I would like to clarify um, the address which he's mentioning, 392 Lakeshire. Um, so that is pre-2014 by law, uh, which is not relevant anymore. and. Uh, um, I checked in the area. There is uh, no other variances for height right now. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that clarification. Any other questions or items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Are we ready for a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Sorry, I didn't see you. Okay, Ma Madam Chair. Um, it's been one of those days. So, um, um, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I have some significant reservations about this application. Um, like, like some of the comments that were raised and questions that were raised by my colleagues, um, I, I feel that the significant piece here is the building height. Although I don't, um, uh, I see the building height piece connected in with with the the um, the GFA piece. Um, the other variance is I'm I, I'm not seeing too too much of a problem, but the overall massing and size of this building is significant in the context and the comments provided by our um, by the planner on this with respect to the 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 presence of or lack of presence of other. Um, applications for or approvals for height with the exception of those that pre-existed the existing bylaw um so on that basis i'm going to put I, I would agree with staff i will put forward a motion uh to refuse this application on the grounds that it does not conform that the variances do not conform to the four tests of the act very well is there a discussion on this recommendation mr Talowski? Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I'm going to somewhat reluctantly support this application. 
Um, it's unfortunate that the applicant didn't seek a deferral to address the height issue, which I believe is the only significant variance here. But they had that opportunity. Um, and I'll support the motion. I cannot support the height. Okay. Um, so the motion is to deny the application that is before us on those merits. Um, all those in favor? Okay. The application has been denied, none opposed. Thank you. Have a good evening. Okay. Application CAV 158 of 2022 at 154 Sable Street. Again, it's CAV 158 of 2022 at 154 Sable Street. I believe Mr. Kieran is with us again. Go ahead, Mr. Kieran. Hello. Good evening again. Um, Yes, uh, this this application uh, is uh, fairly st straightforward uh, for two reasons. Uh, one, it, um, it's a uh, renewal, if you will, because this variance uh, was for the committee in 2018, um, pretty much the exact same variance, exact same house. Um, we moved the house, we reduced about six inches off the back of the house because after the fact, we realized there was a, uh, actually uh, an easement back there that we couldn't uh, build. So the, the porch got a bit smaller, but the variance we're seeking is exactly the same. Uh, it had expired. Uh, my client put the project on hold and during that time, the variance expired. So now we're just back, it's ready to get going again. So we're just back with, um, with the same request for slight increase in lot coverage. 26.1%, uh, 25 permitted. You can see the two areas that it's really the porches, a combination of a, a portion of the back porch and the front porch that's contributing to that overage. Um, slide two, please. Uh, it's just the same uh, identified areas only on the first floor, just for clarity. Um, that concludes the presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions if there are any. And uh, staff is in support of, uh, of uh, this application also. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, are there any questions of Mr. Kieran at this time? Or items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Let's take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Mr. Flemington. You, uh, Madam Chair, um, having uh, reviewed the application before us, as well as knowing that the town's written staff report is in favor of the application. Also, uh, the comments made by the applicant's agent this evening, um, I would like to note that there were no uh, written uh, or oral objections uh, from the public or support from the public. Uh, I am prepared to make a motion in favor of the application as applied for, finding that it meets the board test of the Planning Act. And I'd like to include the following two conditions. Uh, the first one that the covered porch be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated August 8th, 20. 22 and our second condition that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued for the proposed construction very well thank you mr flemington is there a discussion on this recommendation okay i see none uh all those in support okay the application mr flemington you froze you were in support, I'm assuming, because you made the motion. So uh, everyone was in support. Uh, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you. Have a good, good evening.
Okay, application CAV 159 of 2022 at 3372 Spring Flower Way. Again, this is CAV 159 of 2022 at 3372 Spring Flower Way. I have the agent as Benham, Mal, Mal Benham. Benham. Um, Madam Chair, it's uh, Mr. Giancarlo Tari. I'm just promoting him. Okay. okay. Hello, am, am Hello, I present? Good evening. Hi, uh, good we evening. can hear you. You can turn your uh, camera on if possible, but we can hear you. Okay, let me, there we are. Good evening, Madam Chair and committee members. I am the applicant's agent on behalf of this file before us. And I guess I will, I'll just start right in on it. So. We thought we had a pretty basic, straightforward application. We're seeking relief of one variance, and that uh, is for relief of a rear yard setback. At this current site, the requirement is seven meters, and we're asking for a relief of 1.88 meters or six feet, two inches. The proposal in front of us is for a sunroom addition to the rear uh, of the existing dwelling. So we have read the reports and I would like to talk on the reports and then I would like to also touch on a previously approved minor variance in the area exactly three minutes away. Um, so I guess I'll start with a positive. It appears that the city of the Halton region uh, staff had no objection to the proposed minor variance application seeking relief under section 45-1 of the Planning Act. However, I did notice in planning report, they had some concerns of the rear yard setback and the fact that the sunroom has glass. Um, so I guess I would talk in regards to the rear yard setback. I would like to reference um, the committee application that was brought forth. Uh, and the application number is A043-2017. That was March 14th of 2017. The house is three minutes away. The streets pretty much touch each other. If you look at them on Google, they're, the streets are literally touching each other. I don't know if I can show you in my camera, but I have printed the map. See if it's... Here is us and the approval. 1.1 kilometers. So that is a semi-detached home and they had a minor variance approved with 4.19 meter rear yard setback uh, to their sunroom. 4.19 was approved. We're asking to have 5.12 meters left versus 4.19. So we feel that was pretty generous. We tried to design the sunroom space, you know, being very cautious of the neighbors and the property and, and so on, but also to the functionality of the space. Uh, I guess my last point is the sunroom interior space is 12 feet. The relief for asking for is six feet. 
So it's pretty much impossible to reduce this room uh, to compliance. Uh, however, the house really needs another space. And you will notice there was no uh, letters of opposition from neighbors. That's what I wanted to point out. And I hope you can take into consideration the previously passed. And if it comes down to something that the, the staff is concerned about windows, windows can be changed. You know, windows can be changed. But we feel we're, we're, we're being very cautious, you know, in trying to, to, to not overbuild here. So I guess I'll conclude with that and, and I'm available for any questions. Ms. Tari, you, you, you say that windows can be changed. Uh, this is a sunroom. What would you replace the windows by? Wall whatever wall they would like to see so you know for example in in a house you have a wall with maybe 30 percent of it of window you, know, you just have a different relationship of wall to window in this case we wanted more window the, oh, the neighbors but, but the sunroom when you define something as a sunroom it's seasonal so it unless this is going to be with heating and everything. So it's gonna be used as a living space. Now that's a completely different definition. Okay, well, in that regard, the definition of the sunroom versus the living space, I'm not sure why they're so different. I, I personally don't know. Uh, I'm definitely not opposed to that, but it is living space, 100% living space. So they're using it as a as another a, a living room, uh, so it will be heated and insulated and everything. So yes. in in reality, it is a rear yard addition to the to the dwelling. Yes. Okay. Those are my questions. Uh, anyone else have any other further questions? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This is a question uh, to the applicant, Mr. Tari. Um, uh, did, when you uh, received the staff report, did you uh, take the opportunity to reach out to planning staff to explore your, your thoughts and ideas with respect to uh, modifications that might ameliorate some of the concerns that were expressed? Regretfully, that was not done. Um, Which is why, again, we're, I guess, when I look at, at the application and, and what's here, we're here for relief of a, of a setback. And I understand their opinion that they feel there's a little too much window. And, and that's fine. But I don't know how many people have or share that same opinion. And I just, I would really try... Uh, to, you know, to, to satisfy the homeowner's request to have more, more glazing than less. Ms. Murray. Um, yes, uh, I you. think Mr. Tala, sorry, go ahead. I, Mr. Tosky, I'll get to you. I, I did see your hand go up oh, with I'm Mr. Sorry. Hardcastle. No, no, go ahead. Oh, just a, a quick question um, through you, Madam Chair. The applicant had indicated that there are no letters of objection. I, I would like to know about the canvassing efforts of the neighbor uh, of of the applicant to the neighborhood. Thank you. The homeowners had spoken to their neighbors directly, adjacent, left and right, front and back. Uh, everyone was obviously aware of the minor variance. The signage was up. The the notices were sent. Uh, there was no objections from when the neighbors uh, were speaking with the, the current homeowners. No one seemed to have any issues. I would conclude that we've done a lot of these sunrooms over the years. We've been building them almost 30 years. Uh, and what we found is a lot of the neighbors encourage it because it helps increase the value of their homes. And the most common thing we hear is, oh, my God, we would love a sunroom ourselves." you know, 
for whatever the reason may be, their house is too small, they had a new child, they want to stay located there to keep their children in the same schools, they don't want to leave the neighborhood, they, they love the cities, and, and they're desirable. And so it, they become a very positive, uh, you know, an uplifting effect to, to, the, to the neighborhood. So that's why I suspect you see no letters of opposition, because they're generally received very, very well. Mr. Tosk, you go ahead, sir. You had your hand up. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to ask on the other variants that you were referencing. What was the address, please? Yes. The address is 3356 Robin Hill Circle. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any further questions or items of clarification? A minute, sorry, go ahead, Ms. Murray. Or just a note, since you did give us that reference, um, 3356 Robin Hill Circle, I do see the sunroom. The difference there is there's a great mitic mitigating factor of a very large mature tree uh, between the backyards that would, would shield any overlook. So I just, I'll just share that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. That's a Murray. great point. And, and I can touch to that if you'd like. Um, so if you look at uh, actually on the staff report that was sent with this, with this application, our neighbors, sorry, our neighbors, our property owners also have some beautiful cedar hedges that are going to be directly in front of the sunroom that cause, uh, you know, some very nice uh, privacy. There's a beautiful tree uh, immediately to the left of them. Uh, the other thing too I wanted to make, uh, make record of is this is a living space. The homeowners are going to be in here. It, it's, it's, it's part of their home. It's open to their home. They have every intent of privacy as well. They don't want to be on display either. So there's going to be a lot of privacy with shading systems and, and, and so on. They have... Uh, you know, if that helps. Okay, any further questions or items of clarification? Okay, I see none. Um, let's take the matter into committee. Who would like to move a motion? Did I see your hand up, Ms. Murray? Yes, go ahead. Um, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, having conducted my site visit and reviewed the applicant's uh, uh, submission, as well as the uh, town's written staff comments, which I note that the, the staff are not in support of this application. I also take into consideration the comments presented by the applicant this evening. Um, I note at this time that while there is no objection at the meeting today and there's no objection noted um, from the neighbors, it's unfortunate that in canvassing the neighbors, um, we don't have letters of support for, for this variance. Um, I do note that the um, uh, proxy um, that was cited that is potentially similar to this addition is 3356 Robin Hill Circle. But again, mitting, mitigating factor for overlook there is, is a huge mature tree so that, that, that anyone in that sunroom in that particular instance would not necessarily 
be looking into their neighbor's backyard. And so that, I, I think that makes a very big difference for me. So I'm going to make a motion to deny this application, Madam Chair. Thank you. Great. Um, is there a discussion on this recommendation? Okay, I see none. Uh, all those in support of this application being denied. Okay, the application has been denied, none opposed. Have a good evening. Application CAV 160 of 2022 at 1538 Bayview Road. Again, it's CAV 160 of 2022 at 1538 Bayview Road. Uh, Mr. Good evening. Yes. Good evening. Good evening again, members of the committee. Um, again, Paul Demchek uh, with Victoria um, Urban Planning. Um, I am the planning consultant on behalf of the applicant for uh, 1538 Bayview Road. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so I have prepared a brief presentation uh, for the benefit of the, uh, the committee this evening. There are a number of uh, variances, um, including some uh, more technical in nature to assist with um, the proposed design of the development, uh, which I'd like to explain for the benefit of the committee, which uh, obviously is intended to meet um, some of the fabric of and design of homes, um, as well as uh, garage projections that do significantly exist within the immediate context of the neighborhood. So the subject site is located on the south side of Bayview Road. Um, the property is currently vacant. Um, although a previous um, dwelling was uh, fairly recently demolished uh, on the property. And the landowner seeks to construct a new two-story single detached dwelling. Um, I will note my client has an active site plan application um, that, is, uh, that, that is obviously before the town. And we've been working um, pretty closely with Conservation Halton, the town of Oakville planning and urban design staff, as well as a number of other agencies uh, to get to this point, um, and obviously in advance of this uh, minor variance application. Um, so just in terms of the existing conditions, the site obviously borders Lake Ontario uh, to the south, and the subject site um, is approximately uh, 1,428 square meters and is uh, technically a corner lot, um, obviously with frontage on Baby Road and then Belvedere Drive, which terminates uh, adjacent to the property. Um, so there are two existing access points to the property, obviously one being located on Baby Road and a secondary access on Belvedere Drive. Uh, next slide, please. Um, in terms of the, the variances, uh, as I mentioned, there are a number of them before the committee this evening. So I would like to take a moment to obviously uh, go through uh, each of them and explain uh, the merits and obviously the design intent uh, for what is being proposed. So we are going for variances, obviously, for building height, uh, the minimum front yard setback, um, which is essentially a condition just to legalize um, the existing or the proposed dwelling, uh, the maximum floor area ratio, uh, the maximum garage area, uh, the garage projection, as well as the driveway location. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a site plan of the, uh, the proposed dwelling, um, which shows essentially the siting of the dwelling, um, the driveway uh, locations, and you can see the general proportions that are obviously intended from, a, from the a proposed development. So the development comprises of a two-story, four-bedroom, single detached dwelling. Um, obviously, it's on a waterfront lot um, with an overall floor area of approximately 476 square meters. The proposed dwelling covers 25% of the property and um, in terms of the, the lot coverage and the height of the dwelling is 9.96 meters. The existing vehicle accesses from both Baby Road and Belvedere Drive 
um, are intended to be continued um, uh, in the new development. And the proposed building has been located to fit appropriately onto the subject site, um, again, falling within the required coverage and cited appropriately relative to adjacent dwellings on Bayview Road. Um, next slide, please. I would like to just point out uh, one, I guess, fairly critical piece. There are a number of properties um, on um, Bayview Road in particular that, uh, that do have uh, projecting front garages. Um, and this includes the neighboring property to the west of the subject site. So you can see here what's shown is essentially like a streetscape image of the proposed dwelling as well as the uh, adjacent property to the west. Uh, what's shown in this image is obviously a mirror of what's happening in terms of the projecting front garage on the property. Um, and then further on the bottom of the slide, it shows, um, again, trying to match proportions of what was previously proved and constructed um, on that dwelling, which was back in approximately, I believe it was constructed in 1989. Um, obviously, the, um, the height is, is less than what is um, existing to the, uh, to the west of the subject site. Uh, and again, we're looking at doing a, a proportion in terms of the, uh, the garages that essentially matches and works with the context of the, uh, the proposed existing driveways. In terms of obviously assessing the, um, the proposed development, uh, in terms of the, uh, the four tests, I would like to go through a few components. Um, so the proposed dwelling has been evaluated in the context of the urban design guidelines for stable residential communities. Um, I would suggest that the proposed scale, massing, height, and siting of the development generally reflect the built form of houses in the local context. And again, the site itself is a corner waterfront lot, which utilizes existing access points from Baby Road and Belvedere Drive. And the built form design and garage projection do provide a consistency of design and proportions relative to adjacent dwellings. Again, the proposed coverage and setbacks, including side and rear yard setbacks, comply with the built form requirements of the zoning bylaw. And the proposed setbacks result in a building that is situated appropriately in the lot um, to maintain compatibility with adjacent residences and limit any potential impact for overlook or, or privacy issues. Um, the proposed uh, dwelling again is um, um, in terms of the, uh, the garage design, um, essentially it seeks to replicate um, and mirror that of, of what's happening to the West. And the, um, just in terms of the, sorry, just in terms of the access points on Bayview and Belvedere Drive, again, they're maintained through development, which limit impact on any existing street trees, as well as degrading within the existing right of way, um, as well as we, we work to limit the potential width of any of uh, the new driveways um, through the proposed development. Just in terms of the, um, just intent of the zoning bylaw, and um, a number of the variances. So obviously in terms of the intent of the height is to limit um, potential impacts from overlook, uh, shadow and, and loss of sky view on adjacent properties. So the proposed maximum height of 9.96 meters um, obviously exceeds the bylaw from nine meters. And I would suggest that the character of homes in the surrounding neighborhood are obviously predominantly two-story homes. Um, and the proposed height is of a scale and massing um, that fits in with the, the, the local context. And it, it obviously in particular, it fit, fits in with the two-story dwelling that exists to the west. In terms of the minimum front yard setback, this is to ensure a consistent setback of buildings uh, relative um, uh, to the street line. So the, again, the proposed setback does align uh, identically with the setback of the adjacent property to the west, um, just in terms of the, um, the projecting garage. And then the main wall of the dwelling is further set back on the property, which is a similar built form to the adjacent properties within the immediate, uh, immediate context. The siting of the dwelling also provides an opportunity to maintain and enhance on-site landscaping, both through, again, preservation of existing trees and then planting of new trees and including soft and hard landscaped areas uh, throughout the site. In terms of the floor area ratio regulation, again, this is intended to assist in regulating scale and mass of a dwelling. It's my opinion the proposed increase in floor area ratio does not contribute negatively to the scale and massing of the dwelling. And the dwelling is again in keeping with the required lot coverage as well as setbacks and a height that is characteristic of the built form features within the context of the immediate neighborhood. 
In terms of the garage area, uh, the garage area provision is intended, intended to ensure that uh, garages don't dominate the streetscape um, and, uh, and do not uncharacteristically uh, provide large parking paths um, uh, within a building footprint. I would note that the proposed garage design um, situates the garage doors facing again internal to that circular driveway, which mitigates the impacts of the garage from a streetscape perspective. And the garage is designed as a two vehicle garage with the additional garage storage space um, that is not suitable for additional vehicular parking internal to the, uh, the building. And then further um, uh, mitigating impacts of the garage are obviously the existing street trees which are being preserved through the proposed development. Um, the last two being garage projection, obviously the intent of that is to ensure that um, the garage does not negatively impact the streetscape. Uh, similar to what I just explained about the uh, intent of the garage area, um, I believe we've, we've tried to work as best as we can to mitigate obviously the impacts just in terms of its design and the front elevation of the, um, the proposed dwelling um, provides for an appropriate architectural articulation to mitigate impacts and visually um, improve the streetscape. And then finally, the driveway location. Um, I will note that, um, again, these two driveways are existing conditions, um, which are intended to be used through the, uh, through the proposed development. Uh, one comment I would, um, actually, sorry, before I get there, if we could just go to the next slide. So this is the, uh, the front elevation. You can see the massing is broken up by a number of varying roof lines and building inundations. And then further, the garage, which is on the right side of the screen, is mitigated through um, architectural articulation, um, essentially to appear that it's not, uh, not a garage from the, the Bayview Road frontage. Next slide, please. This is the rear of the, uh, the proposed dwelling facing the Lake Ontario um, side of the property. Next slide, please. And these are the side elevations on the bottom uh, right slide, uh, or sorry, bottom right of the slide is the elevation um, that faces uh, Belvedere Drive. And I would note that this is this elevation is obviously broken up by a number of obviously inundations um, and setbacks in the built form and further um, single story building heights to mitigate any potential massing impacts. Uh, next slide, please. Um, there was one comment. I would like to know, which I believe was provided from the zoning examiner in the staff uh, report and comments, just as it relates to the driveway locations. And I'll just uh, make sure I just have that with me here. So um, it did note that there was a potential discrepancy between the variance application and the driveway locations. I do wanna note that there is no change to the variances being requested this evening as it pertains to the driveway location. What we've done, and this has been reflected in our uh, most recent site plan submission to the town of Oakville, is what we've done is essentially reduce the driveway widths to comply with the zoning bylaw requirements, um, uh, and specifically the driveway width along Bayview Road. Um, again, there's no variance requested. There's no changes to the proposed variances. I've had discussions with zoning staff about this, and they're aware um, of our intent to uh, reduce the driveway width to meet that condition. Next slide, please. Um, obviously, we've read the uh, planning staff report. Uh, I would note that planning staff are recommending support of all of the proposed variances. Um, it is also my opinion that the proposed variances do meet the four tests under the Planning Act and do represent good planning. Um, I'm before the committee, um, should there be any questions and, and, and happy to assist in any way possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Demchek. Are there any questions or items of clarification at this time? Go ahead, Mr. Talowski. Thank you, Madam Chair. Question to staff. The condition reads that the covered porch be built in general accordance. Um, is that the correct condition for this file? Oh, um, through you, Madam Chair, um, I would like to apologize. It should be the uh, the building, which should be built in accordance with the uh, general accordance with the summit site plan. So the dwelling. Yeah, that dwelling. It's correct. That needs to be edited, yeah. 
So it should read that the dwelling be built in general accordance. Any other questions or items of clarification? Okay. Uh, there is no one that has called in for this application. We can take the matter into committee. Go ahead, Mr. Tusk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, if anyone ever questioned why the committee does site visits, uh, this is the reason why. When I read the variances on their own, they did not appear minor until I went out to the site and uh, somehow they've managed to design a dwelling that's both consistent with the local neighborhood yet at the same time, it's less impactful than number of the houses that exist today. Um, and that's uh, impressive given the number of variances. Um, and unlike a number of applications we've seen today, the design and in context here mitigates any impact of the variances in my mind. So Madam Chair, I would move that this application be approved as applied for finding it meets the test of the planning act i would note that there is no opposition from the community i would make that subject to the dwelling being built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated july 7 2022 and that the approval expires in two years if the building permit has not issued very well thank you is there a discussion on this recommendation Okay, I see none. All those in support. Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a great night. Um, application CV082 of 2022 at 1188 Cary Road. Again, it's CV082 of 2022 at 1188 Cary Road deferred from May the 17th of 2022. Good evening, Mr. Heather, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Madam Chairman, committee members. Uh, Jason Heater on behalf of the owners at 1188 Cary Road. Uh, as was mentioned, this was a previously deferred application uh, from late May. Uh, we have had uh, lengthy discussions with planning staff um, and have made uh, fairly significant reductions to the plans in order to reduce uh, all of the requested variances. Um, it can also be just, just uh, as, a, as a note, um, three of the original five variances were supported in the initial ap application, so it was really an effort to, uh, to work on some of the uh, larger GFA related issues uh, for this home. Um, we're, uh, we've uh, got planning staff on our side. Uh, we're here seeking five uh, variances. Uh, I'll just run through them quickly in order here. Um, so third page, please. Uh, maximum size of garage. Uh, this variance relates to a tandem depth and a bit of additional storage required uh, for the homeowner. Uh, the garage presents as a typical two-car setup from the street. Um, there are no uh, impacts to the neighboring dwellings, uh, nor does this contribute to a coverage request or any sort of uh, additional side yard variances um, related to the project. Uh, next slide, the uh, dwelling depth um, relates again to covered porch features shown in the pink here, one of which is an uncovered arbor structure at the rear. These are single story uh, elements um, that do not pose any sort of overlook condition for neighboring properties. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, residential floor area uh, permitted 29%. We're seeking 30.66 or 30.67. Um, the dwelling meets coverage requirements. Uh, we provide ample setbacks uh, on uh, both side yards and rear yards. Uh, much of the additional um, GFA uh, is related to 
us having to include a portion uh, above the garage area uh, as additional GFA. Otherwise, we would have had to seek a larger GFA variance. We had to meet a minimum of 25% above. Uh, that wasn't necessarily required to make this floor plan work, but it, uh, it helps us um, mitigate a much larger RFA request. Uh, the dwelling has been uh, stepped back at all floor levels. Uh, in order to reduce the impact on the neighboring dwellings. Um, much of the additional GFA is located within the sloping roof lines. It does not present negative impacts to the neighboring dwellings. And uh, we believe the, the home is consistent with mass and scale of others in the neighborhood. Uh, next slide is front yard setback. Uh, this is just a quick little graphic to show the existing house location compared to all of those on the street. So you'll see the existing home is located almost 20 meters back from the front property line. So what we're looking to do is bring the house into alignment with the two neighbors. We're actually going to be behind the neighborhood neighbor on the, uh, the left and ever so slightly in front of the neighbor on the right. Um, and it's really just a small covered porch element uh, that projects into, uh, into the front yard setback. This allows us to uh, uh, site the house um, in, in a, and conform a little more to the, the current streetscape in the uh, neighborhood and provide a, a proper balance. Uh, lastly, um, I'll just speak to, uh, if I can go to the next slide, please. Uh, sorry, this is just a front yard setback graphic as well. I've just drawn in sort of an arcing line at 10.5 meters. There's a front yard porch that projects into that 10.5. And you'll see the two neighboring dwellings on either side are, are, are we're in relative uh, alignment. And then back behind that, you'll see the existing house just dashed in in red that sits, it sits almost behind the existing neighbor on, on the uh, west. Uh, next slide, please is a uh, height request. Um, the height variance relates specifically to this uh, small uh, center mass element. The remaining stepped portions of the home uh, comply with the current bylaw requirements at 8.9 meters. Uh, there is also a one meter uh, grade discrepancy to establish grade. So much of the additional height um, is, is that drop off to that front street property line. Uh, I would like to note that the portion uh, above the nine meter allowable is, uh, is only eight meters wide or less than one third of the full building width. Uh, we've taken uh, additional steps to reduce overall impact of height by uh, lowering and stepping portions of the uh, house down to single story roof lines um, in order that it, um, uh, that it transitions better to neighboring dwellings on either side. Uh, just in closing, we believe these uh, variances meet the four tests. Um, planning is on side with this, and we have received uh, no letters of uh, opposition or no, uh, uh, no contact with any neighbors in opposition to this application. I welcome any questions. Thank you, Mr. Heather. The, uh, any, are there any items of clarification or questions at this time? Hey, I see none. Um, no one has called in for this application. We can take the matter into committee. No, Madam Chair. There is no phone calls. Okay. Go ahead. Who would like to move a motion? Go ahead, Mr. Hardcastle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sorry, uh, my computer is just running a bit slow. Just give me a quick second here. Yeah. Um, Having undertaken my site visit, having reviewed um, the written materials, including the written staff report, as well as the um, um, presentation provided by Mr. Heather, um, I am satisfied that the requested variances conform to the four tests of the Act. I'll put forward a motion of approval um, subject to two conditions, those being that the dwelling be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated August 5th, 2022 and that the approval will expire within two years of the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Um, I would note that there were no members of the public present with respect to this matter. 
Thank you, Mr. Harkas. Was there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none. All those in support. Okay, the application has been approved. None opposed. Thank you for your time. Have a good evening. You as well. We're on to application CV 100 of 2022 at 2068 Woodgate Drive, and that's application CV 100 of 2022 at 2068 Woodgate Drive, deferred from June the 14th of 2022. Good evening, Madam Chair and uh, the members of the committee. Um, this application um, was deferred from June 14th in order to get proper permission from the pipeline, um, and that was obtained. The variance request for our pool and proposed shed to be 1.52 meters versus the three meters from the litter of the Trans uh, Canada pipeline right away. Very well. Okay, are there any questions or items of clarification of Ms. Seppo at this time? Okay, I see none and no one has called in for this application. No, Madam Chair. Very well, we'll, we'll take the matter into committee. committee. Go ahead, Ms. Murray. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Having conducted my site visit and re uh, reviewed the applicant's written submission as well as the town's written staff report, which I note uh, now is in uh, support of the minor variance, uh, as is um, the Trans Canada pipeline. Uh, I'm satisfied that the minor variance uh, meets all tests under the Planning Act. I note that there are no comments from the public, either written or oral, at the presentation this evening. I'm prepared to make a motion to approve the application for variance subject to the following conditions, that the accessory building, cabana, slash, shed, and pool be built in general accordance with the submitted site plan and elevation drawings dated August 15th, 2022, and that the approval expires two years from the date of the decision if a building permit has not been issued. Thank you, Madam Chair. Very well, is there a discussion on this recommendation? I see none, all those in support. Okay, the application has been approved, none opposed. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you, Utah. We have uh, minutes to confirm from September the 13th. Mr. Hardcastle, thank you. And then um, motion to adjourn. Ms. Murray, thank you. We are adjourned at 8.54.